Hi you guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be reviewing Married at First Sight season 17. So I watched that episode, the last episode this past Wednesday. It aired on January 31st and this this show just keeps getting wilder and wilder. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is Chloe and Michael. So they open up the show and Chloe and Michael, um, well, they do Austin and Becca, but no one cares about them. Chloe and Michael um, talking and Chloe reveals that she has panic attacks. And she's like, you know, I didn't have my humidifier. I didn't have my sound machine. I didn't have, you know, all these things, which is ironic because I use a sound machine and I have a fan going when I'm sleeping. And I mean, I understand having a morning routine and one of the things that I talk about on my channel outside of um, Married at First Sight is the fact that when you get married later in life, you have so many set routines and so many, um, yeah, just like routines and the way that you do things that doesn't uh, really align with having another person in your life because you've been alone for so long. And I could instantly relate to Chloe on that level where I'm like, yeah, Yep, you're going through what every woman who um, is not married for a long time, um, who's been single on her own, independent, you know, just living her life, successful, and then all of a sudden there's a permanent partner there, she's going through what a lot of women go through. So I didn't want to give her a hard time, but what I did note, wonder is, does Chloe have it in her to truly adapt. She's putting on a good face where she's like, you know, you know, I'm I'm self-aware and you know, I'm I'm flexible, but part of me doesn't think so. And ugh, this is going to come out so wrong. But whenever someone is like that anxious and that prone to panic attacks because I've been there. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you know I suffered with debilitating hospitalization panic attacks you're not really in a space to change. Sorry, just going to say it. So I really wonder if Chloe is able to actually accept this situation and be like, okay, I'm getting married. I'm married. Actually, I'm married. This man is here. He's different from me. My life is different, but this is what I wanted because this is what it takes. What I'm realizing with all of the couples is that there's this thing where they want to be married, but not really. Like they want to be married, but they don't want all the change that comes with being married. And I hate to break it to you, but when you get married, there's a lot of change. And you have to be the kind of person that's okay with that. You have to want to be in a successful, healthy relationship more than you want things to stay the same. So Chloe reveals that to Michael. And of course, Michael being his emotionally um, developed and emotionally intelligent self, is really um compassionate he's understanding and he's like you know it's okay you don't um you don't have to change like i want you to take care of you first and she's just overwhelmed with i think guilt i think it's guilt but she's overwhelmed with emotion because no one has ever told her how to take care of herself and i think this is the case for a lot of women you guys a lot of women are raised to be uber self-sacrificing and thinking that that's the thing that's going to make someone love them and make them worthy of being loved and i say that because i've been there right so i'm only speaking from experience and this is not to you know super project but whatever this is this is real life so with chloe she is a type a personality and a lot of type a personalities they're very good at their jobs they're very high strung organized tactful respectful on point don't make mistakes and that perfectionism is actually a way to be loved and so it's all about like pushing that stuff out and saying okay this is i'm gonna output i'm gonna give and this is what's gonna make me lovable versus being like let me take care of myself first and then give for my overflow and that's what makes me my overflow is good enough to be loved and when michael was like i want you to take care of yourself I I had a newfound respect for him because that's a man who at least knows the right thing to say. Whether or not he believes that, he knows the right thing to say. And a lot of women don't realize that that's okay. And I just felt a lot of compassion for Chloe in that moment because I 
I think for me, I have been there where I'm like, wait a minute, you're telling me that I need to take care of myself first and then I can take care of you? Whoa, right? That's a big shift. So um, yeah, so that was the first scene. And then, so we move on and <laughs> we get this really quick clip of Austin and Becca, nothing exciting. That, that relationship is so dull and boring to me, to be honest. I think they're like in Colorado with their family and they're just, you know, oh, we're here or not Colorado, um, whatever with their family. It doesn't matter. I don't care about that couple. That couple is doomed. Um, and then Chloe makes a comment about Michael being so prepared with his six bags, which I thought was hilarious. Um, Michael's excessive. Okay, can we all just say it? Michael is excessive. He's a, he's an eccentric, excessive character. And whenever someone is that eccentric, you guys, I wonder what they're hiding. And this does get revealed later in the episode, but I'll talk about it now. Michael's relationship with his family doesn't seem to be the best. He didn't tell his mother that he was getting married a second time. And I think that's weird, which also explains why there were no, like none of his family was there. The cast members were all his, his family. So the, that was the, like a bigger red flag for me it was like, okay, your family, you didn't want to tell your mom, like be a big boy, you know, be a big boy and tell your mom that you're getting married again, that you're trying it again. And maybe he was embarrassed. I get it or whatever, but it's like, you're an adult. And so I don't know. I think whenever someone has excessive things, there there's a there's a bit of shame there or there's some kind of hiding there. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but with Michael, I just I can't help but get the inkling that like something's off and that he's compensating for something. So I get a little nervous for Chloe in that regard. Um, but yeah, she makes that comment about him having six bags and here she is with her one bag and like two pairs of pants and five shirts because she's a minimalist. Um, which I'm not so sure if that couple is going to work out now. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of differences between Chloe and Michael that I'm seeing. The minimalist thing is interesting because typically in relationships, the studies have shown that if the woman is more of a spender and the man is a saver, then, um, or like a, you know, strict minimalist, then the relationship tends to work out. But vice versa, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that someone who's a minimalist tends to be more, um, like masculine in a, in a way, you know, where they're a little bit more strict with their money and strict with saving. Whereas like the abundance piece of like, oh, I'm just, whatever I have, I'm freely giving is more of a feminine piece. So, um, it'll be interesting to see if she really cares about that. I would find that if I were Chloe, I would find his opulence annoying you know, it, it, it wouldn't bother me from a financial standpoint, but it would just be annoying and clutter, right? If she, if she's someone who, again, she has anxiety. So not having things in your space is actually a great relief for anxiety. Being a minimalist helps with anxiety. So it would be really interesting to see, you know, how Michael lives and Michael has, you know, stuff. He's got things. So unless all of his things have a space, a place, and it's not cluttered, I could see how Chloe would get a little bit overwhelmed by that. Oh, Emily and Brennan. Okay, so Emily and Brennan have this talking stick and they just have these super shallow conversations. Um, and Brennan, Brennan's like, we're, this is the moment where Brennan realizes, Emily, I think realizes that Brennan is very much only interested in having a friend with her being a friend with her and not, at least on camera, and not having an actual relationship. Because Brennan is stringing Emily along and under the pretense that they will spill the friendship and then potentially go into a relationship. And you know, Emily, Brennan shuts Emily up. Did you guys remember this part where Brennan was like, Emily goes, um, you act like a friend on camera, but then, and then he stops her and he's like, do you really want to say that? Do you really want to, um, you know, share that? And I think what Emily was going to say is you're willing to sleep with me off camera, but you don't want to do that while these cameras are here. That's what I think is happening. Poor Emily is in a classic, you know, um, she's a classic call girl, you know, booty call situation. She is Brennan's booty call right now. Guaranteed 100% allegedly in my opinion he is because the way he shut her up so quickly when she was like you treat me like a friend 
sometimes you treat me like a friend and sometimes you don't. It wasn't that he's mean to her. It's that he's sleeping with her or being sexual with her or doing things that are giving her mixed signals, which is why she's on camera talking about, we had chemistry. I know we had chemistry and it's going to be there. I think that Brenna, and it's going to come out later. I think it's going to come out later on the, not on the after show, but on the reunion show that Brennan was, she's a booty call. And she did not want, he did not want that to be revealed on camera. Um, so yeah, I wrote down that she, he cuts off Emily and she basically says he doesn't treat her like a friend in private. And that part was so telling to me that, um, that Brennan is actually, he's attracted enough to Emily to sleep with her, but he doesn't want her as a wife. And it's sad because unfortunately, this is why I'm a firm believer that women don't tell men their business. I'm a firm believer, stop telling men your business. Not because I'm like, oh, you should be secretive, but Brennan is treating her exactly how other men treated her, which is your booty call. You have one night stand, you date, but you are not wife material. And I wonder if she had just gone into this um, marriage as like, okay, I haven't had many, many boyfriends, but didn't reveal that she was like sleeping around with these guys. I think he would have treated her differently. But it seems to me that he's lost respect for her as a woman. She's fine to be, you know, his late night call, but she's not a woman that he respects. And I think that's ultimately it. And so he's doing what every college guy does. And yes, he's acting like a college guy, which is I'll call you at night, have you come over, but in front of everybody else, you're, we're not it because I know that everyone else has slept with you too. You know, and it, it's actually like, it's really sad to me, um, the situation with them because I just think that I wish Emily and I wish all the girls in the show like Lauren got in trouble because she was running her mouth talking about what she did. Ryan, you know, we didn't like him anyway. So it was actually a blessing in disguise. Um, but these girls are telling their business and sharing their past encounters and men, they will use them against you. And uh, the flip side of that is stop having these random encounters with men so you don't have to tell these things. So it's just a lesson and it's not slut shaming Emily or anything like that. It's just, it's, there's a fine line because we live in a world where like sex before marriage is okay, right? We live in a world where that's deemed okay. It's, it would be silly for me to be like, don't sleep with, because these girls are not going to do that. But in my world, yeah, don't sleep with these people. Do not sleep with these men. And then you have to go tell them who you slept with. And then you get a situation like this. So I think that that's genuinely what happened with, um, Becca and uh, Brennan and Emily and I think it was very much revealed in that very conversation where he cuts her off and says hey uh no um okay other thing that happens is Chloe makes um Michael dinner really sweet moment that's where they have their little chat about you know um she needs to take care of herself and she expresses some apprehension towards moving in and Michael of course is supportive and all that thing during that meal we also see Michael hold his fork like a caveman it was the oddest situation for someone who was so refined I was really shocked by that um <laughs> my husband was like whoa he's like what is that so I was like okay this is bad um but um all in all this episode was you know I would say it was another dud I liked being able to see Emily and Brennan um have their comp talk it out but I think the the biggest thing we got from that episode is that Brennan is um Emily is Brennan's booty call that's what it is and Chloe and Michael only time will tell they do seem like they have some differences in their lifestyles and I think only time will tell how much they're willing to bend for each other because it is going to take a lot of bending for if they were both minimalist then I would say this was work if they were both more opulent I would say this is definitely going to work but it seems like they have a fundamentally different view on life an outlook on life and they're both trying to appease and be you know um amicable in front of the cameras and it just it, it's it's I think they could work if they really wanted to, but I don't think they have the tools and I don't think the relationship experts have the tools to really make this work. So I'm a little bit concerned for Chloe and um, um, and, and Michael. Now, um, next episode, we're going to hear more about um, Brenna, uh, Austin and his uh, uh, sex issues with Becca. Again, you guys, my thoughts on that is... 
my thoughts on that is that, um, you know, Austin doesn't like Becca. He's not attracted to her. He treats her very bro-like. He treats her like a, it's very friendly. Um, it's like sister almost. It's like, it's that kind of love where it's sisterly or cousin maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Or best girl, best friend. It's not, I'm attracted to you. I'm wildly, uh, madly in love with you. It's, it's very specific. He does love Becca, but not in a way that would make her a wife. And I think that's why he simply why he hasn't slept with her. People are are speculating that he's a virgin. And I, like, I don't think it's any of that. I think he simply knows that this is not something that he wants long term. And so he's not going to put him in a situation where he's going to make Becca attached to him. That's a wise decision. Um, but him, like the rest of the guys on the show, don't want to share their true feelings. So here we are. All right, you guys, tell me what you think. Do you think Chloe and Michael are actually compatible? Do you think Emily is Brandon's booty call? Do you think Austin is attracted to Becca? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one.